What else could you possibly want to be doing? Nothing. That's why I'm here. Big yeah. into gardening. If I wasn't doing this, I'd be a gardener. Box gardening. I can see <laughs> it. Big hat. Minimalistic gardening. Just the basics. Tomatoes, peas, a couple two tree nanas. <laughs> <laughs> about it. If you're enjoying the content Room 6 is putting up, please make sure you subscribe down there and hit the bell so you don't miss an episode. While you're at it, feel free to like and share, and uh, yeah, let's go. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local Las Vegas music scene and the people that make it, including me. I'm Josh, and today we're actually not in Room 6, we're on the road, and we're not with a local band, we're with a band that comes here so much they might as well be locals. <laughs> um, we are at Bunkhouse Saloon in downtown Las Vegas, and courtesy of today's guests, they're based out of LA, but they spend hardly any time in LA, right? You're always touring. We tour a lot, yeah. 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 Uh, we play but, there as little as possible. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, these frequent visitors to Vegas blend hard rock and classic metal. Yeah, yeah, we're a metal band that. about riffs, hooks, and leads. It's a good way to put that. Did you read this? <laughs> uh, <I> Eric, <laughs> my notes. And they blend that. They blend that into a sound that they describe as. So, from their debut EP "Dehumanized" to their most recent release "Stranded," that's the most recent thing, right? Yeah, right. Cool. Seeing them live is a treat for the senses. I got to check out Soundcheck. I'm Jones, and I'm really excited. Seriously, one of the most the tightest sounds I've heard. Why not? Just the oh, yeah. Good job. It. Please welcome to the show, Void Vader. Yeah! Ow, ow. Say hi, guys. Ow! Yeah, yeah. Go for the for anybody that's watching this that doesn't know you. Thank you. Um, go ahead and introduce yourselves. Tell them what you do in the band. What's up, y'all? I'm Sam. I play bass guitar. What else? I sing, and I like to skateboard, and I really like pizza. <laughs> I'm Lucas, I play guitar, and I'm the lead singer. I'm Joe, uh, I play drums, and do no singing. Lead drums, right? Lead drums, yeah. yeah. It's the second chair. <laughs> and I'm, <laughs> I'm Eric, I play guitar, do some backup vocals. Um, I talk about the Illuminati. He does. He's the band mother. Yes. yes. More like band dad. Yeah, band dad. dad. We're all guys, so everyone's a dad. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you very much for coming. Normally, I say welcome yeah, to my home yes. and we toast, but this isn't my home, and we don't have any drinks. Yeah, so it's all new territory. Some green room bunkhouse. Anyway, <laughs> at I'll least be, we have one. I'll I'll, right? I'll be doing a venue review as part of this tonight. Well, well, we'll see how it goes. Because you know my my followers are gonna care anyway. <laughs> How long have you each been doing music just in individually? So are you, Sammy? Uh, well, I'm 26 now. I've been playing music since I was 10, but I've been playing live since I was 15. So I guess I've been playing live for 11 years now. That's kind of crazy, huh? Still well, an early start, yeah. though. 15, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Started playing at the at the whiskey with like high school friends and <laughs> shit like that. So that's a heck of a place to start. It's a heck of a place to start. It's not Especially as hard. At 15. As... Yeah, well, at that point, all you got to do is sell tickets to your high school friends, and then the whiskey takes the dough, and you get to play on their stage. Right. But it, that, that's how you earn your chops, though, you know? So I've been doing it for that long, 15. It wasn't 21 and up? No, whiskey's all ages. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Obviously, it never been yet. But I've also heard from more than one musician on this channel that it's not what it is. It's crap it to be. Well, it's oh, a it's, great club. It it's is a fantastic club. It's club. a great club, but the way that the management handles it and takes it depends care of it. on your deal. I mean, what do you yeah. think, Sam? Uh, I think that they're doing the best with what they got going on as far as music in LA. I mean, the whiskey is a legendary venue, so to maybe. Uh, they gotta be doing something right. They've been a venue for 50 years. Well, they've been around for a long time, but to like negate all the just like people that just want to play on the stage, there has to be a couple of different ways that they can just like, right. you know what I mean? Then the guys that are on Hollywood Boulevard with like the sticks and the and the buckets who've got good time, but it's like you can't play at the whiskey doing that kind of shit. You know what I mean? So right. it's got lots of different Yeah, people have to take it seriously. <laughs> We've only played there once. We opened uh, for the Ultimate Jam Night about a year ago. Yeah. I'd say over the whiskey over, over a year ago. They do, tour. yeah. Where they get all you know all sorts of different touring musicians that play. You know, some this guy from Rat and this guy that played with Cinderella. Right. Well, same thing Vamp does here. Similar, yeah, yeah. for sure. 
All right, moving on. Sorry. Sure. Didn't mean to overarch your time. What are we talking about? Uh, who you who, uh, are, you who are you? How long have you been playing music? Uh, I started playing drums when I was nine or ten. I can't remember exactly. Right on. Uh, and then I switched to guitar when I was about twelve. And pretty much right away I started playing. Like I practiced for a year and then I joined a band. Uh, well, you oh, know. So you did it right. You, you woodshed it first and like practice, practice, practiced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but for like maybe a year, learned some power chords, a few songs. And then uh, <laughs> one of my buddies from my basketball team was a drummer. So we started a band. Nice. Um, and we just started playing a few gigs here and there, and I'm 31 now, so I'm not going to do math, but... Like, Is that oh, her mom? You look, you look, no. Okay, that's a no. different You look different. good for your age, I just got to say. Look at it. No, no. Yes. Every time I trim this, more gray shows up. It's really just disheartening. <laughs> Makes you wise, dude. Yeah. Oh, wait. Wait. You just wait, beard boy. <laughs> <laughs> beard boy! Him, he's going to look like that forever, I can tell. I'll be like a dusty white orange. <laughs> <laughs> so, how about you? Uh, 24. Uh, I've been playing drums since I was, seriously, since I was about 12. I went drums when I was 10. Um, I started touring when I was 18. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it's six years now. Nice. And, uh, yeah. And I just didn't go to college or apply myself, so here I am. <laughs> so I went in Vegas on a Wednesday, baby. Chase your dreams, kid! <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> nice. Do you do you hand percussion too? Uh, I've dabbled. Um, it's not my uh, realm of expertise, but yeah, I could I could fake it. Well, it's sure. a lot of times. It seems like it's you're either on the kit or your hand drums, and it, unless you're doing like we're going to play acoustic, so I'll play hand drums. Right, yeah. But uh, the the people that are like two, not people plenty. Um, who am I thinking of? Congo's uh, famous. Mm. Obviously, he's I'm thinking like I don't so know many dudes. names, but like those Lamont leader, like that dude from Santana, that dude. Rips. Yeah, yeah, from Santana. What's his name? I don't remember what his name. Feel is. free to he put rips. it in comments if you know, because I I'm blanking. Cool. Uh, but but one of those guys who, if you put them on a kit, might not know their way around as well as you do. Yeah, so. I think if you have a natural sense of rhythm, it tends to translate to, to any form of percussion. You know, I mean, maybe not as good as the next guy who right. excels in that uh, expertise. But I think, yeah, I mean, it's 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 pretty transferable. Right on. I, I only ask because uh, I I'm currently better on hand percussion than I am on kit, but uh, I'm taking lessons with my drummer actually. Nice. And uh, started this year, so it's it's really weird because like the rhythms are there. Yeah. But when I have to actually do it right, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's totally it's a different story. Well, if you love uh, spending a lot of money and moving <laughs> heavy gear, drumming is definitely. <laughs> That's the best part. I don't. Yeah. I, I have a practice pad that he gave me. Right, yeah. Um, I know I'm giving okay. rave reviews of drumming here, but... <laughs> no, <laughs> drumming is a great way to get in shape. Yeah. If I wasn't the drumming... the best thing I could say about it. <laughs> I mean, I'm not in shape, but if I didn't drum, I'd be way more out of shape. <laughs> so, definitely a good way to keep the uh, the cardio on yeah. a daily basis. Drumming and cocaine is a great way to be in... No, just right, kidding. Yeah. <laughs> right on, we're Strip Vegas. dieting. Yeah. I'm just thinking of Travis Barker. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. Next! Hey. Last. Yeah, I've been playing since I was 13. Uh, I grew up in the Pinnacle. Um, I was actually living in Tustin, California at the time, and then we got transferred to Detroit. That's where I went and uh, kind of grew up. Been in a bunch of bands since, and uh, when I moved out to LA, it was for a band called White Wizard, and then I was in Gypsy Hawk, and then uh, that folded, and then I uh, met up with Lucas, and been playing with Lucas and the boys since. Like I said, like we started off with a bunch of crappy gigs and crappy musicians and yeah, should do. formed it into what you see here. Right. So, um, well, you've lasted this long in bands and <laughs> yeah, you know, that's the true testament is going on tour in a band. I don't know if I could do it with my, what, my family. Well, not your family. That's why we do it with us for yeah. because I, 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 love, to be I love my wife and band. child very, very yeah. much. We get along great. Yeah, let's we've, clarify that. We've yeah. gone on road trips. Love you, babe. We've got a long road trip. <laughs> but man, the touring's the best. Uh, it's the best is thing the best. in the world. And uh, yeah. once we started touring, the band really started taking off. You know, we had to get the right guys in the band. And uh, once we did, we started small and grew from there. So it was like three days to a week, two weeks. And then just start adding numbers from there. And here we are in 2020. And like, as you said, we've uh, probably played Vegas almost as much as we played L.A. Yeah. And and when you spend all your time and energy playing in your home base, that's what ends up, that's the end result because you spend all your time and energy 
plank there and right. uh, and and you tap out. Yeah. It Local sucks your energy. What's yeah. that? Local heroes. Local yeah. heroes. So, or you know, we're we're big fish in a small pond kind of thing. Oh uh, yeah. You gotta get out. out. You just you gotta get out. out. You just run out of room. Man. You might eat shit in new markets, but you gotta. Your oh, you're going the first time now. You're definitely going to because no one knows yeah. who you are. Uh, right. Yeah, that's the real work. Everybody thinks yeah. that it's like showing up and rehearsing. That's why there's so many bands that they go on tour once and then oh, they like, oh, never, right. never hear from and them. You never hear from them again because they get really disappointed because they're they're expecting you know to play. For right. They're passionate people. about it, but they're not. They're not. Right. They're passionate about it, but they're not. Uh, uh, persistent about it. You gotta see the bigger right. picture. Because well, sometimes know? it can be, you know, the first few tours can be a little disappointing, you know, mm-hmm. because you know yeah. maybe you're playing for, you know, and not empty rooms, but like maybe you're playing for twenty people, and it's not very motivating. Mm-hmm. But if you're you never get, exempt. If you, can, if you can get past that, then it gets better. Right. If plus, you're if you're watching and you're not in Vegas, you gotta play Vegas at least once. Right. Vegas it, rips. You gotta come to Vegas. Yeah, you gotta come to Vegas. The right. reason why we keep coming back to Vegas is because they treat us very well, and uh, yep. every time we come, we play for more people. Yeah, people right. come out to shows, yeah. and and usually the uh, the venues realize you're on tour. You we need to treat you a little more special. And it's yeah. the same as if if band goes to LA, they might be treated a little bit better. No, no, no. What? LA, yeah. LA, LA, uh, LA is brutal. the exception. Uh, I wanted to see if I could get, get we got two, we got two drink tickets each tonight. It depends where you play. You may not get any drink yeah. tickets. Oh, in believe me, uh, Emily Bay, <laughs> House of Blues. The, seriously, like, yeah. what? Anyway, um, moving on. How how long? The, the, what you were saying is a great segue into how long have you been you four as Boy Bader? I would say 2015 because it was the end of 2014, so it doesn't really count. Let's just say it doesn't count. And it was just Eric and I playing with other people. We were kind of like just jamming and trying things out, uh-huh. playing a few gigs here and there, but it wasn't like a serious thing. I don't. Mm-hmm. Know. And when did these two come along? Um, that's a loaded question. It's, yeah, 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 a little bit. Should when I did I join? 2017. Yeah, yeah, like a week before the CD came out. That's right. Before Dehumanized came out. Uh, yeah, that so was that was the first. You had to learn quick, huh? Yeah, uh, quick, but yeah, yeah but that's kind of how I roll. You know what I yeah. mean? So yeah, yeah, I prefer it personally. If I'm, you give me a deadline, and but if you tell me, oh, just get better, I'm, I have a hard time pushing myself like that. Yeah, I need deadlines. Yeah, he learned to set in a week. Let, let's, and we had a great show. Yeah, lights a fire under your ass for sure. Yeah, so that was 2017, and then we started touring mm-hmm. a lot after that. Were you already uh, in the band? Like yeah. to July of um, 2018 is when we started touring. I guess a year later, huh? Yeah, I was exactly. um, their their drummer Herman. Uh, Love you, dude. Great man is uh, currently in London. He's there with his wife, uh, so I'm kind of uh, I'm Orange Herman, <laughs> <laughs> you know, indefinitely. But um, nice. Yeah, it gets, always kind of works that way. You meet a lot of people, and you can kind of slot people in here or there. And it's, it's the modern day band. It's it's you know it's, having a stable of musicians. You just, is nice. just got to adapt, you know. Yeah. I know. We met we met Joey a couple years ago on one of our first uh, like treks up the West Coast, yeah. and we were, mm-hmm. he was playing with a band called Final Drive, and mm-hmm. then we like dude was hilarious. We just clicked, and, uh, and we were all like, "Wow, like guy's really good at he drums." Was, he was hanging out with us more than the band. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that's always a good sign. Funny. And I love the dudes in Final Drive. Shout out Jordan, Nate, Max. Yeah. Love you. Um, but again, when you're on tour with them for like. Two straight weeks, and these new people come in. You're like, I'm gonna go hang out with them. Yeah, I, I know. I love smell guys, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so it was definitely, you know, we had our run, and we kind of met up with them and did the West Coast like with them. Right, and that's kind of where we met. And the, yeah, definitely uh, love to hang with them. I was uh, getting a little cabin fever in the final drive van, so. I know. It's, it's nice in, to have another band out with hanging and drinking in bathtubs by the end of the tour. You yeah, know? Well, Reno, so Dirty Night in Reno. You Reno. That was a good night. Fantastic Reno. Reno. Um, good night slash is everybody, Everybody's got a face fucking Reno. Everybody's is, got one of those. Is anybody oh, yeah. a native of LA? What part? Uh, I grew up in Burbank. Right on. Because that's the thing with LA. It's like San Diego. There's not a lot of them. You can't just say, oh, I live in LA. Yeah. Without saying Burbank. No, or yeah. North I, I, grew up, or... I grew up in... Oh, look at you throwing out the valley. Mm. Yeah, I grew up in yeah. Burbank. Uh, somebody called me a unicorn one time because <laughs> I'm one of the few that seems to be... You know, very rare. Born and raised, yeah. you know what I mean? So, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm supposed to transplant. I'm hearing a lot more, lately, I've been hearing a lot more people say that I'm, they're native here, but they're like the young bands. They're like the young musicians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But if someone's mm, our age, it, they're like, oh, I've been here seven years or whatever, or I just moved here. And they're like, when you leave, take someone with you. 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> I've, been, I've been in Vegas about 17 years, so after 10, you're a native. Yeah, right on. Right. Yeah, right. I don't even know. Like a long time. time. I mean, yeah. In LA, it's been only one year that you're considered a native. Yeah. If you I last, that's yeah. like, wait, wait, wait. I think people consider themselves natives yeah, if they've okay. been there a year. Yeah. L- living in LA is kind of like, to me, living by the beach in San Diego. Um, Kyle Kinane, comedian, had a bit, it was like, you can find a couch. Nobody buys a couch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You put, with money? Wow. You must be doing good. Um, that's true. This is right on the stream. This interview, I'm going to ask you. Two u- of those like usual interview questions, and I apologize in advance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is number one. Where did the name Boyd Vader came come from? I oh, couldn't find it anywhere. For it. <laughs> Wait for it. I couldn't find it anywhere. Can I answer? <laughs> go, yeah, go, go, go. It. it means Darth Vader in Spanish. No, it does That's not. Fucking not. It does. No, it's, it's, it does the not. problem with the question <laughs> is that the answer is really stupid. I know. It's, that'd be uh, Vader Nagel. But we gotta, we gotta, we gotta be consistent and honest. Well, this is consistent. Well, then, There's then, that we say all three of the things. Yeah, it's all three answers. <laughs> the reality is that I was living in a very tiny, shitty apartment, okay. uh, and the elevator was always broken. Nice. So Vader is elevator. That's why it's spelled like that. Yeah. Right, and it was a void elevator. Right. Yeah. I was there, 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 were, the there were two elevators. One worked maybe three days, three days a week. Right. And the other one had nothing in it. Well, you heard it here first. From oh, so open. that's the stupid I, answer. I think that's awesome because it, it's not. It, like, you you gotta have the fake stories, but I yeah. think that's actually an awesome reason why. Because otherwise, there there was I couldn't. I couldn't say, how did they come up with this name? How did, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> they they know how to spell Darth Vader. I'm sure. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. If you Google it, you know it's gonna pop up. So that's it's yes. the only one. Yes, yes exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, it actually rolls off the tongue really well. Oh, yeah. Alliteration is always say. good. Alliteration, my man. And, and yeah. we have a killer logo to go with it. Yeah, you know, actually. Um, <laughs> and it, yeah. does, has it, does anybody ever say to you, Void Vitor? We get all sorts oh, of weird we stuff. Vitor. Vitor. Void Vitar. You should, you should totally, tr- you should totally do the, uh, you know, like, like, Foo Fighters have shown up and like played as a student, a, a totally fake band. Yeah. Or usually, yeah. like you know, we're the uh, the empty empty bottles or something. Empty bottles. <laughs> hold up, hold, 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 hold up. Hold up. That's, That's hard. Nice. Wow. Get up and play some. You know, I don't know what kind of music, but all right. Um, <laughs> let's talk uh, musical influences. Mm-hmm. Whoever wants to start, what was your earliest musical influence? What made you think I want to do that? Show that ink, son. Nirvana. Yeah, right. Nirvana. 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 Kiss. Nirvana. Bit of a leap. Yeah, well, I was nine, so yeah. I, you just like rock and roll, right? Whatever, whatever it was rock, kiss for me. yeah, well, whatever you know gets you going, whatever gets you your blood pumping, you, you know, is yeah. what you're into. Right on. Next, uh, uh, Joe, go for it. You got the ink just, on your arm. I mean, Thin Lizzy all day. I got a, the whole. You know, sleeve I was going to ask you. I didn't see the words. I was going to ask you. Yeah, <laughs> I got Phil. I like got Black Rose Jailbreak. I, you know, no, best band on earth for me. Yeah, oh, sure. yes. yeah. Tonight. The arm of Lizzie. Yeah. So my old man uh, introduced me to that when I was super young. I just kind of stuck. So yeah, that sound. It actually having heard your stuff, a I can see, I can see a little bit of that. Some dual guitar thread. shit going no, on. No thanks to me, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> like I said, classic on the new record. record. <laughs> yeah. Wait till you hear the new record. Oh yeah. Um. What do we have a name yet for the new record? Well, I'll, we're not quite sure yet. Okay. We don't know. Yeah, we'll I'd like to. I'd like to call it Great Fear Rising. That's, but, you know, okay. Okay. That's, that's been it's the not number works for right now. It's been the, it's been the front runner. Empty bottles. I'm just Empty bottles. <laughs> void bottles. No bottles. Your fans are like, what? Well, <laughs> the, our fans are the void bottles, dude. Yeah. Hell yeah. Nice. Yeah. Are you really? Absolutely. Yeah, they are now. Our nice. buddy Garrett, yeah, Fallen Sons, came up with that. <laughs> that's right. So, really. The bottles. Yeah. Yeah, I'll go next. Um, yes, please. MTV got me into music right when it started. And actually, right before that was... Uh, She's a little runaway, and I heard that song <laughs> yes. right when it came out, okay. and 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 I loved it. Again, bit of a leap. <laughs> yeah, roll around. But, so oh, when you well, say, that's what, what as a kid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you know, that was like during days, the pinnacle. That was like eighty two or something like that. And I heard that, and MTV came out, and uh, let's see. Uh, I mean, you had everything from Van Halen to Motley Crue to Twisted Sister. Of course, was featured on there, and Def Leppard. First cassette tape I bought with my own money was Cinderella, and then I quickly moved on to uh, Megadeth. Oh yeah! Man. Also through MTV Headbangers Ball, you know yep. King Diamond, Ricky Rat. and then it, it got kind of heavier. And so, uh, you know, a good a good bit of uh, glam metal and a good good chunk of thrash metal. 
Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. I I wasn't going to say the words glam metal from talking to you guys, yeah. but that, but uh, off of um, Dehumanize, the, the music video you got... Um, Until It's Gone? No Return? No Return, I think. Yeah, it's just, I was just like, I sense, I sense an influence here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's just here. great rock and roll, man. Yeah, it's it is. great yeah. rock and roll songs. Straight ahead rock and roll is definitely a, a good umbrella to put you guys under. Course, definitely. Yeah. Um, did we get everybody for your? No, video? you missed Sam. So, uh, am I else? I'll, yeah, it's I mean, take ten minutes. No, I'm, <laughs> I'll make I'll make it quick, man. I mean, Cliff Burton's the guy that, that got me into all of it. I heard Seek and Destroy for the first time, and I was like, what the fuck is this? Right. You know what I mean? And so that's kind of like, that's my dude is Cliff. You know? Thoughts on Jason? I dig Jason. Yeah. He's metal as fuck, yeah. you know? I think he did the right thing eventually. Like, he realized, I want to go a different way. Yeah, man. I mean, everybody's got their own journey. He had a hell of a time in Metallica. That's a good gig, you know what yeah. I mean? I mean... It must have been hard for him to walk away from that. Probably. I can't even imagine with your biggest band yeah. pretty much ever right now. And it wasn't even know? a fight, from what I understand. It was just... And you just well, bored waiting no, around. No, he, start, he started a new band, and they were like, what? What are you doing? You can't do that. Oh, is that what happened? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's what they said. In they talked about that. I do remember. Kind of it's been a long time. So. Echo Brain or something like yeah, that, right? Brain. That's what they were called. By the way, I didn't mean to Chase was oh, I ain't worried about it. That's so hilarious. And then Lars and James go to one of their shows, and then Lars has like a meltdown. And goes like, I feel like Echo Brain is like the future, and Metallica is the past. And it's like, dude, what are you talking about? You know what's going on? Like, yeah, well. If my wife always told me, if for some reason the music thing or the YouTube thing, if you if you end up if we end up in a room, if I'm with you and we end up in a room with Metallica, do not introduce me to Lars Ulrich or I will deck him. She, oh. she's still salty about Napster. Interesting. Why? Uh, Why? Lars right. is right. Yeah. I, Lars, Lars is right, right. and one hundred percent right. One hundred percent right. Yeah. It did not hurt musician sales. Oh yeah, it, 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 it started it, but also it yeah. started this public perception. He was absolutely right, and a lot of he was the only one that would stand up. Everyone else felt the same way that they let him take the bullet for him. Yep. And uh, so that was a real shame. And then, and then like the public kind of took a spin on it. The Illuminati put a spin on it and turned him into this like this uh, this pest, you know. Right. And everyone bullied up on him and and, uh, and crushed his reputation for a couple of years. He was he was right all along, and everyone knows it and admits it now. All right. Like I said, that was just my wife. Yeah. And that she's the public. She's not a musician. Yeah. All right. Fair yeah, enough. A consumer. It and, sucks. and I just. Yeah. If I'm a consumer, I'd rather right. not pay for anything. Funny, funnily enough. Yes, it's a word. Um, <laughs> streaming uh, payments to artists. Guess what pays the most to an artist? Napster.com. Is it? So, yep. We got to get back on that. Who, who the fuck uses Napster? Uh, right. That, that's the I, real I found out I'm on it. Thanks. The distribution. I was just like, wait, what? I'm yeah, I know it exists. Napster's a thing, and then yeah, and then, and then someone, I don't even someone see how came out with the, the breakdown of like Spotify. Who, who pays what? Nobody pays. Like, that's, <laughs> that's like using a beeper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know what though? If they're paying more, I love beepers. Yeah, I, the problem is point oh oh three. Yeah. Right. Um, we talked about early musical influences. Uh, let's talk about current musical influences. What are you listening to in the van? What are you listening to to get you jazzed? Jesus I God. listen to Disaster a lot. We were yeah. listening to That's Our Buddies Out of San Francisco. Yeah, they just They're released on. a new record. I've been listening to that for like three weeks straight. Nice. Uh, yeah. They're in heavy psych sounds. They're this is why I love doing this show. Label. I love doing this because I hear bands that I've never heard of or musicians. Yeah. And, and then, you know, I go and check them out. And uh, I've been exposed to a lot of different stuff that I never would have found. Just mostly because I don't have the time to go. We, we don't have an Amoeba Records here or, or something like that. To go yeah. Bin diving. Is Zia kind of the only thing that's Zia, out Yeah, here? Zia is. And Zia's, they do the best that they got. Yeah. They got a couple locations. If you're, if your um, material, if your stuff is in their shop for sale, then you can have like, hey, I'm going to have a CD release party and play the stage at Zia. Oh, that's, no shit. That's cool. Yeah, the one right cool. off of, uh, what I mean, is it, Eastern I mean, or Har I know there's one off yeah. like kind of near Eastern and Harmon. Uh, yeah, I think that's the one. That's the one. But there's a, it's a pretty decent sized stage. Um, well, shit. I've never seen anything. I've never seen anybody there. But um, to get your stuff in there, it, you act, it actually has to be like a real CD. Yeah. With, with a barcode yeah, and yeah, all yeah. that stuff. And I just um, at the time I I didn't have that. I was totally like stomping labels on. Yeah, dude, CDs and, it's DIY till you die. Yeah, that's how it goes. DIY. Sometimes. Yeah. Well, but to touch on what you're saying, like a lot of the way to get into music is just your lifestyle, and and if you're completely separated from it, the last thing you heard of was from 1994. That's probably where you 
where your cutoff is. And unfortunately, we get to meet and play with a lot of great bands. Another band would be Haunt. They're an exceptional band that we played with uh, a number of times from Fresno. And a lot of our friends we, bands just rip. That's yeah, the cool thing yeah, about yeah. playing music is most of them are friends, you know? Nice. And that's that's yeah. what I get excited about. Um, our mates on uh, on Ripple, Bone Church. Adam Bone and, Church! Uh, Connecticut. Check out Bone Church. Comes out March 13th. We played with them in Connecticut and Pencil in Philadelphia. We played with them in Philly. We didn't play with them in, in Oh, yeah. We're they in, were at the Connecticut show, but we played with them in Philly. Yeah. yeah See, I wish I knew these venues that you're talking about, because they sound awesome. <laughs> They're fun. Uh, yeah, it depends. you got to have a... It's definitely an experience, that Philly show, yeah, for sure. South Philly. Woo! I've heard that... Playing Philly, playing rock in Philly can be really good or really bad. Yeah, I mean, we we had yeah, a good yeah, gig, and then the gig ended up. Much. Well, the gig ended up getting canceled, so it got kind uh, of shut moved. Moved. It got moved. But it was cool, man. We had to work the door at that show. That was a trip too. Yeah, play yeah, the gig, work sound, that. sell the merch, work the door. You know, you're like, Fix the no, PA. you can't, no, you can't <laughs> get it for free. Yeah, get it working. And then, uh, then there, yes, I, yeah, I, yeah. I that I learned real early. Bring your own sound gear just in case. Yeah, you got you got to get your sea legs somehow, right? That's yeah. how you learn. Uh, anybody else? Uh, current musical influences? Uh, we've been we got a new song that this isn't even new, but it's kind of like Power Trip meets Turbo Negro, which are two very different bands yeah, from like, what we have going on, you know. But those, I mean, Power Trip at this point's been out for. I'm trying to think when the first Power Trip record came out. That's a newer band. Like they've been big for like, like three years. Yeah, yeah. I was just saying, it was the two thousands. Yeah, I don't know. No Power Trip riffs. Uh, we we listen all sorts yeah. of different. Lucas stuff, was man. into the band. I always kept calling him Silo, but it's like Turnstile. 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 They're out of Baltimore, I think. Silo tells the band. Turnstile just riff city at all their albums. Yeah. Just riff after riff. Same could be said about you guys. Ooh, thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. Yeah. Riffs, <laughs> leads. Having two two guitars helps. It does yeah. it definitely? I, I I've been guitar and singer. I've been frontman and, and on a three piece, and it's. There's so much you can do. Uh, yeah, you gotta fill space. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. Moving on. I don't want to go down that road. Um, <laughs> let's talk shows. Is there a favorite show memory you guys have? Favorite show memory? It could be good. It could be someone ended up in jail. Or it could um, be, you know, well, nobody's ended up in jail yet because we're pretty good about staying undetected. <laughs> uh, I just don't do anything illegal, so. The, I mean, the last tour we did with Joey was rad. We played uh, a bunch of cities that we hadn't played before. Seattle Rip, mm-hmm. Portland Rip. Portland, well, uh, yeah. uh, that's a good one. Portland's my best one. I always come back to that Dead Horse show where those all, all three of those local bands canceled. That's oh, was, like, there was a band. Oh, it was kind of a miracle. There was a band from Houston, which is like six hours away from San Angelo. Might as well be Los Angeles like us. You right. know what I mean? And I'm the kind of dude that's just like, you know what? Fuck this shit. Let's, I start talking to people, get the guys out. Let's, we start just, hey, we're a band from Los Angeles. Stick around for two songs. Let us know what you think. And the whole place was packed. Easy 100 people, not 150 people. And we shredded and they all bought merch and it totally ripped and it was awesome. And now we're going back this tour. We're going play with a dead horse. We're going to play with Black Pussy. <laughs> now known as Black Magic Flower Power. I think I've actually be- seen the Black Pussy name. Yeah, I was like, they're a killer band. Ballsy. Good for you guys, yeah. Ballsy, Yeah, yeah, they're a killer band. There was so a they're teaming up in San Angeles. There was an, there's an underground there. venue here. I don't remember the name of it right <laughs> now. There's an under what kind of underground venue here? I don't remember the name of it right now. Um, but it, it very briefly was called the Pussy Dispensary. Because mm. wow. is that the Double Down? Because it was like right next down. No, oh, it was, it was right next to a dispensary, I think. And, oh, so but now right next to they changed it to something safer now. But they oh. they realized quickly. That sucks. Post, posting on Facebook and things like that. So, oh, there we go. Yeah, well, yeah, 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 yeah. All, all, all the keyboard people get pretty pissed pretty easily. Keyboard. You know, yeah, with right? a name like uh, Pussy Dispensary, you're pulling up. <laughs> the, the algorithm on the Facebook is probably not working in your favor plus, plus, either. You know it was like all guys. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, not, they're not dispensing anything with this one. Um, <laughs> Reno's always a trip. And, and, oh, that's a good one. That's when we first met. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything goes in Reno, and it never closes. It's like here, but it's different. It's dirtier. It's the, the it's biggest little dumpster fire in Nevada. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, you'll you'll run into all kinds of characters. Uh, one in four people has a face tattoo. Everyone's doing illicit substances. Shout out, Big Mike. Yeah. I was about to say <laughs> that's when we met Big Mike, and the last time I saw Big Mike was here in Vegas, not at the bunkhouse, but at Fremont Country Club. Big Mike is around for punk rock bowling. Yeah. We yes. love when we play clubs that have great sounds, and we've played the the opposite, though. We always make it mm-hmm. work. 
Uh, tonight's uh, today's sound check was fantastic. So yeah, welcome. You're, yeah, yeah you're in good hands. I, I was yeah. really impressed as an audience member. Yeah, that guy's good. Yeah, we, we've done the show where we play last, last, and the, and the show gets keeps rolling yeah, back, going back, back, and back, and back. And you're going on at one. Literally, yeah. Well, yeah. I think it was like one thirty, and, and, and we might have had like a couple of the girlfriends might have stayed awake for the set, and the yeah. bartender is already clean. No, we've had those those gigs too. How it goes? Yeah. So, um, anybody else uh, paper show memory? Does it cover them all? Yeah. I actually really I have a very good memory of playing the the tree bar. What tree, was bar that? Yeah. tree bar in Columbus. Yeah, that was a that was unique. One. It was a very yeah. strange night. There was a um, like an open uh, stand up thing going on so there were a bunch of stand-up comedians oh. doing sets before us mm -hmm. but it was you know it was good yeah, it's cool it, it made cool. it work it was cool we yeah. made it work and then when we played there was first of all there was a huge uh trunk yeah like in the a middle tree of trunk. The, the yeah, tree trunk bar, in, the, yeah. in the middle of the, of, the, in the, middle of the like, room but like right, off, in, yeah, huh? right in front of the well, stage <laughs> And uh, when we started playing, there weren't a lot of people there, so I don't remember if it was you or Eric. I think it was me. I ran outside. Ran outside, and, 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 and he told the comedians, hey, if you come in and check us out, and you can roast us for a minute after every song. Yeah. Wow, that's gold to a comedian. Yeah. That's, so, and there were well some done. good ones. It, it, was also, it was pretty funny. And yeah. we were just, you know, doing all sorts of stupid shit. Oh, that was great. Nice. All three of us, three guitars, like Iron Maiden, but like feet on the tree trunks, you know, it was pretty yeah, awesome. I thought you were going to say like, you, you, you jumped, you both jumped on the tree trunk or something. Wasn't that big. Eric would have pushed me off. Okay. <laughs> it was huge. I don't remember. Um, but, all right. So from, from, boy. from yeah. favorite shows, is there a dream show you guys want to play or some dream tour you want to be on? Yeah, let's open up for Five Finger Death Punch uh, at Team Mobile, dude. Yeah, all right. <laughs> God smacks. <laughs> Yeah. No, I mean, I do. Dream like, tour? Yeah. yeah. Dream yeah. tour or dream show? Uh, I mean, you gotta just go be like Priest. Uh, yeah. Sure, that'd be great. So that would be a like dream. Fantastic. Priest at the joint. Priest at the joint. You know? Oh, why not? Yeah. Guns and Roses. Yeah. Which one? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> Every single one. Right on. The one where Steven Adler's playing drums. Yeah, Adler's yeah. Appetite. No, oh, I want to yeah. play with Guns N' Roses, but Stephen Adler playing drums. Oh, okay. Not Matt yeah. or I don't know what the other. Yeah, oh, yeah. I would love to do like New Kids on the Block, just something crazy. Something weird. <laughs> yeah. That would be You're real weird. Awesome. With it. No need to grease for life. Anyway. Oh, nice. Throwing it back. Old. I'm so old. It's the eleven day. It's your mix. Congratulations. Oh, uh, what's your next show? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Tonight. Tucson. <laughs> Okay. Three Eleven, uh, Tucson, Punk House Saloon with Dirty Streets and Jason Walker and the Majestic Seven. But tomorrow we're in Tucson. Uh, El yeah, Tucson. House of Bards. House, House of Bards. Of Bards. Yeah. House of Bards. Yeah. Nice name. B like R D S. Yeah. Right on. Well, Bards Tale. Obviously, this will not be uh, edited and posted until after that show, unfortunately. Right. But um, how it's like how 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 long is the tour? If you go on Instagram, you can follow the. Uh, Follow us there on the uh, follow the, us uh, on the flyer all the social media. Uh, the tour is three weeks. Mm -hmm. We're back home April third. Mm -hmm. uh, we play LA April first, and we got a show in Long Beach after that. So we come home and then turn around. But it's, yeah. yeah, we got all sorts of shows, Excuse man. Me. Right on. Twenty two uh, shows in twenty four days. Catch one of them. Nice. Uh, I will definitely have links in the description Sweet. for all their social media um, and, and places you can buy their merch and stuff like that. There. So. Moving on. Yeah! Let's talk gear. Ooh. Now, usually, gear the drummers are the gear whores. Yeah. How many kits do you have? Uh, at home, yeah, I, at have, home. I have two. Which uh, one's in the living room? The centerpiece is definitely the DW. <laughs> that's that's kind of the favorite one. Right. And then I have a sonar that I kind of, like, not so much care less about, but I am more willing to take out. That's a bar kit. Yeah, 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 for sure. Well, well actually, what, let's talk uh, more... Because I know we'll be here forever if you guys talk about every little piece of thing. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, let's talk works. about what's currently rocking, say, tonight. Uh, tonight, I'm actually, it's it's a Frankenstein. Uh, Those are the best. It's, it's a Gretsch kit. Uh, Ooh, I haven't heard of Gretsch kit in a long time. I mean, mentioned. Sorry. Right. Um, so I have to fly here to, to meet up with them, so I don't always have all my gear. But uh, using a Gretsch kit with my DW snare, um, using mostly Tama hardware. Uh, and I'm using Tama Speed Cobras uh, for pedals. Playing uh, Vader 5Bs always. Shout out Vader. And, uh. Got a good course head yeah. for Vader. Come on. Same and simple. Just do it. Ah. Yeah. 
Yeah, that'd be great. Where's the, where's the sponsorship picture? Let's go. Seriously. It's somewhere in there. Actually, how is that spelled? They're spelled V-A-T-E-R. 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 No, it's T-H-A-T. Come on, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here all week. Um, cool. Uh, sticks? Vader sticks. Vader oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean sticks. I meant... Um, symbols? Yes. Symbols. Uh, right now, kind of got a, a bunch going on. I, uh, I'm i still endorsed by TRX symbols. So shout out TRX. Um, I guess you're playing TRX? Yeah. Playing TRX. <laughs> so, that's all. Cool. Next! Uh, hey, 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 what's up? So I've been... <laughs> How you doing? And cut. And, uh, no, we'll I've been playing a Marshall JCM 800, uh, 100 watt head for like 20 years. 20 years? Yeah, yeah, it's a 2210, I think is the name of the model, and a couple pedals in front, mostly just to tune and a little boost uh, to get the solos out. You always need a boost when you're in a two guitar band, kids, mm-hmm. yeah. and grown ups, and dads, and, um, and dads. Uh, I got, and moms. Yeah. I play ESP guitars, and I got a, also have a black Les Paul. That's my stuff. My setup is pretty similar to, like, I play a Gibson Explorer uh, and a Marshall Sil- Silver Jubilee, and I have the Tube Screamer in front of the amp. Nice. That's it. And then I have my Fender Jaguar for backup. Right on. Now, the um, the reverb on the, the vocals was all house, right? Oh, yeah. Because, yeah. you know, some, some people, they'll bring their own pedal. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah. We're like, this is my sound. I, I don't want to leave it up to other people. So I was, because I, as soon as you were saying, I was like, oh, there's some reverb. Yeah. Is, did he bring that? Is that No, nah, okay. it's too much of a pain cool. in the ass. Uh, real quick, did we talk strings or picks for you? No, I've been playing GHS just because they're from Kalamazoo, Michigan forever. For like 25 years. Picks, I use a Dunlop style um, 1.14 millimeter. It's funny, it, it, there's two two guitar players, it's either those or there's the ones like, I don't know, I find a pick on the floor. and <laughs> Like the Keith Richards style? No, nah, no, nah, nah. <laughs> I've literally had somebody say, honestly, I don't know, my singer gave it to me to play. I don't care, man, it's whatever. It's <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Back to you. Hey, you strings, uh, pedal, uh, uh, pickups? The strings on that I always use uh, are involved uh, 10 to 52. 10 to 52 as and, well. Um, yeah. And the Jazz 3 EXL pick. I can't remember. It's 135, I believe. Right on. See, I don't know that about my guitars. <laughs> I couldn't tell you the actual, like, or my picks. I Literally, it's what I found at gigs. What are oh, okay. Like. Yeah, it, but then again, I, I don't play nearly as much as you guys do. Yeah, Dunlop makes it easier with the color coding. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so. Um, Purples. Great, I just forgot my, what I was going to ask. <laughs> It was Picks played of purple ones. <laughs> strings. Like, uh, I forget. Anyway. Anyway. Oh, um, oh is any aftermarket pickups or is it what came out? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, they're um, Seymour Duncan. Oh, God, man, I can't remember. Um, they're ballsy. Did you get the JVs? I can't remember, dude. Nice. Seymour's. 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 Boy, Seymour, Seymour Duncan. Duncan. They're good ones. I play, Sponsor them. Yeah. <laughs> I play Motor City pickups and it's a boutique little company out of Detroit. And Detroit. Yeah, uh, it's a, a model called the Afuayu. Who's that? Yeah. <laughs> All right. How about you? Uh, Fender basses. Um, I use a Mesa Boogie M9 carbine head. Never thought it'd be a Mesa guy. I always thought it'd be Ampeg, but this head screams. There's nothing. I mean, there's a reason they're still around. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Uh, yeah. This Mesa head rips. Yeah. Um, I use uh, a couple different pedals. Uh, Go Go Tuner, uh, Visual Sound Route sixty six. Is that uh, is that what that was? That fuzz? Yeah. Well, the the fuzz is this electro harmonics uh, kind of di thing that's got a whole bunch of shaping, and then the Visual Sound is for the lead bass tone. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, it sounds yeah. So amazing. I want, I got two. I mean, essentially two different overdrive pedals. Um, Seymour Duncan pickups. Lucas actually just put some Seymours. He put both of the Seymours I have in the bases I'm using. I'm right Sam's now. tech. He's, my, he's also my dad. Well, no, somebody in the band has to be. Yeah, right? No, Lucas is good at all that stuff. He's, he's silly with that shit. Yeah, uh, Seymour exactly. Duncan, Quarter Pounders, and then I use the, the heavy, slinky Ernie Ball bass string, so they're like 55 to like 115. They're like... Makes, it makes me Meaty. play harder, which, me, which means I get to be closer to like Cliff, you know what I mean? Nice. So. Right. He played real thin strings, because he was always able to bend them all like gnarly. Right. Oh, my no, strings no. are crazy thick. But I don't yeah, know. Your know. music doesn't lend itself to the bending like that, does it? Uh, sometimes, but I just don't have any parts I, that I, do I've, it listened to, <laughs> I've listened to everything I could get my hands on for, to kind of prep for this. Yeah. And also, because I really like it. And, uh, 
not too many ballads. <laughs> not too many. Not too many slow ones with lots of time for you to. No, but it's it's not even about if everybody else is playing fast. That's the time to bend. You know. Fair what enough. I mean? Fair enough. <laughs> um, from current gear, a dream gear. Go back to the dream thing. Is it a, a, a Wayne's World moment is soon to be mine? Oh, nice. Matter. I'm feeling saucy. I, I know. I like my gear. The reason why I have the gear I have is because I like it. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I guess my dream gear is where I'm using now, really. The it's best simple, I heard. It's simple. It sounds fucking great. Yeah, and it, it works. It cuts through. Um, it works throughout the whole tour. Like, I never had my gear knocking wood uh, yeah. break down on me. So. Yeah, don't, don't say that right before you yeah, play. I know. Yeah. I mean, you just, I mean, it's surefire. <laughs> yeah, something's going wrong. The best response I had to that question uh, was actually from my 100th subscriber, Emily Jean. She's like, I would like um, a roadie. Yeah. Oh, yeah <laughs> that's, that's a good someone answer. to carry, oh, someone to do it all for me. I was about to say the world's lightest drum set. That's what I want. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I do like Engel amps. So, I mean, it'd just be nice to have one. I'm not familiar with Engel amps. You're not familiar with them? No, we're from yeah. Germany. German. For the, from Germany. Oh. And, um, Super heavy game. Probably, I probably can't afford it. It is it's great. They do sound very good. I remember the one that Andrew had. Yeah. yeah. Space. Fireball, Power yeah. Ball. Fireball, Power Fireball, Power Ball one and two. They all sound good. Any that. with any modern Exodus record, and you'll see how good Angles sound. Okay, it's a good representation. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Um, we're on the last section here. We're in the home stretch. Actually, no. I'm sorry. This is the last question. Oh, okay. look at that. Sorry, the gear was the last section. Uh, you made it. Good job. So, let's pretend we're talking to new musicians. Someone who comes to your show and has that moment like we all had of just, ah, I want to do that. Mm -hmm. What do I, how do I hit? What do you, what is one thing you wish someone had told you when you were starting out as a musician and don't say it, change your strings? <laughs> For me, I mean, play guitar. <laughs> yeah. I can't not stress it enough. The drums are so heavy and expensive. No, yeah, I mean, uh, Go for it. Go for it. Yeah. Go for it. Don't you gotta start to somewhere. Right. Start small. No, 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 no. I want to say like a lot more than that. Don't waste your time, and and get in a band, and and if it's not going anywhere, don't feel trapped in it. And it doesn't have to be an explosive breakup. Pursue yep. where you want to go, and, and and meet people that have the same um, vision as you, because otherwise you'll end up butting heads, and it'll end uh, tragically anyway. You don't want that. Yeah. And um, don't. And if you're in a band, um, you have to tour, and you can't just play locally because that's that's all you'll ever be is a local band, which which is fine if that's what you want to do. Yeah. But if your aspirations are more than that, then you then you got to go further than that. And it's if you want to be in room six, you need to do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Come room five. to Vegas, come see me. Not room, room five. Seven. Yeah, you don't want to be in room five. That that's twelve year old girl's bedroom full of. Yeah, or, so if you're a musician, do not stay away from underage women. That's another good one. Yeah. Oh. Well, a lot of what you said, totally true, of course. I, I, I liken a band relationship to a romantic relationship. The ones that work, like my wife and I have been married almost 20 years. Good for you guys. Uh, it's, well, it's, you know, I, I love you, honey. Anyway, <laughs> no, we've been together uh, 19 years and married 17 years. Oh, no, I'm sorry. We've been together. She's watching. Yeah. You're fucking up, dude. No, no, no. no I'm right. You're so fucking up. Yeah, I'm right. I'm right. I'm right. Get it right I was like, it can't right possibly be re reversed. Be in a relationship you want to be in, not that you have to be in. That clingy kind of, yeah, dude. or that sense of loyalty to a, a band because, you know, oh, we've been friends since high school. Yeah, but if you're not getting what you need out of it. You don't don't yeah. have to be an explosive player. You don't right. owe anyone shit, and you're not owed shit. And also, your band is going to suffer as a, like your sound and you're playing it. No, if you're not having fun on stage, the band, the audience won't. Nah, I, I love a band that has fun on stage. I can oh, tell you guys. Here we go. Stage. Yeah, here we go. Night one of the tour, baby. It's about to get real. <laughs> Sam has a lot of fun on stage. That's, yeah. that's all I want to do, man. This is that's it. Great, yeah. This is it. What else could you possibly want to be doing? Nothing. That's why I'm here. Being yeah. into gardening. If I wasn't doing this, I'd probably be a gardener. Box gardening. I can see it. <laughs> Big hat. Minimalistic gardening, just the basics. Tomatoes, peas, a couple two tree nanas. <laughs> That's about it. Some arugula. Yeah. It's a vegetable. A couple of two tree, tree honey doughs. <laughs> <laughs> but but in all honesty, if you're serious about it, then you then you have to really put in some you, you have to lay it on the line. And Lucas moved halfway around the world to get here. 
Yeah. Yeah, where are you from, if I may ask? Uruguay. Yeah. Believe it or not, I thought I recognized the accent. I, I, oh, I've known you a, recognize a Uruguayan accent? I've, I've known one person That's years insane. ago. And I was like, it, it was ringing a bell. I'm like, I don't want to ask. Because it's like, where are you from? Where are you from? Yeah. But Not here. No, you know, not from Vegas. No. <laughs> um, how, how long ago did you leave? Uh, I was 24. I'm 31 now. Wow. Seven years. So, yeah, I guess Eric's point is that, like, if you really want to do something, you mm-hmm. do whatever it takes. Not, uh, a, big, not a big rock I'm, scene in the not, not really. But not, not even that. Like, even when you're starting out and, uh, and you just decide that you want to be a musician, like, you got to put in some time and into working into your in your craft and, yeah. and and developing your chops, and if that means that you got to be in your room for six hours every day, and, and maybe you're not going out and hanging out with people and having fun, mm-hmm. then that's what you do. And then if you have to move all across the world because that's what you feel like you have to do, then that's what you do. Boom! Big facts. Don't know what else to say. Go to shows. Yeah, go to support shows. support your go local shows. Support your local buy team. merch. Yeah. But, go to shows. Yeah. Buy merch. Yeah. 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 By our merch, go to our show. By our merch. <laughs> yeah, and I will say too, a band is more than just the music. Mm-hmm. It's actually um, it's a band of brothers. it's a bit of so it, there is a brotherhood. I mean, we all have shared a, we share common interests. We find the same things funny, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, we can yeah. talk about stupid shit for hours, but like there, there's a culture behind it, and what we are presenting on stage and singing about is what we think is right and what we think is cool. Right. Okay. We're speaking for, for ourselves and then uh, other people that like the people that don't have a voice. Right. Mm -hmm. But, but, but there's more to it uh, than just the music. And a lot of it is going to the shows and being a part of it. Like the band got twice as good when we started touring, just getting out of the city and experiencing. You're out of your comfort zone. You got to figure out how to make it work. And you know, plus, you know, there's, they're probably never going to see you again. I mean, possibly. These people are never going to see you again if it's your first tour. Like you got to put your A game there every time. I like that, yeah, oh, okay. there, there's no there's we play, a chance we, they may not no, see you oh, again. We, so we play here every week. Yeah, you get one yeah. first impression for everyone, I think. Right. It's important. And one other thing that we do is is there's things that we try that don't work and we don't just quit, right? Like everyone seems to think that yeah. what you do is yeah. is you work and then something magically clicks and then boom you're up teleported onto the spaceship and like you're living in the fourth dimension. But what and then some. Here's the deal. That's first of all, that doesn't happen. It's never about just a one a big lottery ticket. Right. Every day is a new day. It's one day at a time. Okay. Well, some days are better than the other, and sometimes you do things that don't work out, like a gig that that doesn't pan out and it wasn't the best experience, or you could have wasted your time trying to do something. You pursuing an artwork with an artist and that didn't work out, and you don't quit. You know, it's ah, oh, that didn't work out, and you don't let it ruin uh, your your morale. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, really you gotta, you gotta persevere, and it helps when you got other guys like this. When somebody's feeling down, it's like, come on, bro, let's get this, let's do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. We got this. So real it you gotta is, be a man. dad about can, it. Can we talk for a second? Yeah. Let's dad it up. <laughs> um, I actually. So, one thing I didn't think about getting into YouTubing, YouTubing, being a YouTuber, was there are times where you're just gonna. That you're not, not, you don't, there's no views, there's no subscribe, the subscribers aren't going up. Oh, yeah. You don't. You just really doubt yourself, and the only person you have to talk to really is yourself, and and it's to to it's a smaller uh, version of what you just said, mm-hmm. which basically is you're doing it, enjoy, just do it, and enjoy it, and don't be a, don't get out there and don't be afraid to to fail because. What's the worst that happens? You're back where you started. That's what you yeah. do. That's what you do. Exactly. Well, the, this the is what I do. The subscribers and the fans are yep. a consequence of yep. you doing what you do. Mm-hmm. And, and the reason I do this, the reason that I have bands on, especially local bands, local bands like, you know, we've already established, are generally bad at promoting themselves. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, the learning curve, for sure. Yeah. Um, I do that to help the local scene, but also, you were saying how... Um, <clears throat> Damn it, I'm trying to remember what you just said. Well, it's it's a lifestyle. It's being a part of the activities, being involved in them, not being just as a spectator, and not just wanting something out of it, being an actual participant. I've probably Actively. said that like three times. Yeah, being in it for the right reason. Right. If, mm-hmm. you, if you're doing this to get subscribers and Facebook likes, no. and then no. forget about it. Yeah, don't, don't get then in you'll give up. money, that's for sure. 
Don't they don't give up. Yeah, it's not worth it. Yeah. Oh, I don't have a million subscribers. So and so does. Oh, right. quick. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. At the end of the day, you still got your axe. You the, still got your drums. You got your guitar. You got whatever. Just because yep. your Instagram likes aren't going up, you know, put the phone away for a couple of hours, play some guitar, and you'll be totally refreshed. You know what I mean? Have something that you can right. come back to that music's never let us down. That's why we're still doing mm -hmm. it. You know what I mean? You're let down by all sorts of different people throughout your life, but music's never let us down. That's why we're still here. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're we're cool. in control. We are our own bosses. We're not reliant on anybody. Okay. We're not dependent on anybody. That's beautiful and getting more and more beautiful every day. We're not trying to knock on someone's door and say, please let us in. Please let us in. They keep laughing at it. Fuck. We don't even, no, we don't even knock on their doors. We're we just do a, it. Find another way. We don't even, we don't even care. We don't even care about their house. Fuck your house. Yeah. Like we have our own house. Like a show on the call. Our house is better, you know. Yeah, and, you but we're completely self-sufficient, so we don't have to answer anybody. And um, and that's I think that's the position you want to be in because you don't want to be asking for permission or uh, no. You got to you got to you got to figure out how to play nice sometimes, not to schmooze and whatever. Right. But you you know we all benefit each other. One band may help another band. This label or these booking agents may help this other band. But at the end of the day, it's like. You don't do things because that's just what it is. There's something bigger behind it. You know, there's a bigger picture. We're part. Of, we're all part of something greater, and that's this. You know, this metal world, this metal community. You know. There you go. And it's it's fun. Just one last thing, man. It, it, it's okay. fun to build this and to see it like kind of come from nothing to to maybe just a casual, just an idea. And and we want to be serious. We put plans in motion, and we work really hard to to get them to to work out and to see them through and to see them. Uh, to see them go through is really inspiring. And then also we are meeting a lot of cool people who That's seem to be like trend. digging it, which is also, yeah. it, it all yeah. feeds into, uh, yep. into each other. And the same goes for me and my channel. It's like the more bands I interview and the more venues I go to and the more, you know, shows I check out. That's it. You're the, part of the scene. The bigger, like I'm really quite, you know, overwhelmed a lot of times when I realize that there are people that actually are listening. Thank you. Thank you. And there are people that actually want to make the scene better. Yeah. Want to leave the scene maybe and go on tour. Um, and I just remembered, while you were talking, that second usual interview question I forgot about. Oh, shit. Let's hear it. It is the most hated of all interview questions. That's right. Get. Let's get it out. How would you describe your band's musical style? Elevator pitch. Let's go. Riffs, riffs, hooks, and leads. Yeah, exactly. Man. Riffs, and I knew it. I knew you were going to do that. ABC. Riffs, hooks, and leads. Riffs, hooks, and leads. What, what's a riff? Yeah. Something yeah. that makes riffs. your neck hurt nice. and a girl's panties drop. Hey! Yeah. Yeah. Songs without riffs are not are not good. It's better than gardening. It's better than box gardening. Yeah. You have kick-ass <laughs> vocals right. and you need to have like high energy. Yeah. 80s shred, 90s hooks. That's kind of how nice. it goes. Yeah. All right. Well, normally, after an interview, I have them perform in front of my guitar wall. Obviously not happening. Uh, with your permission, I'd like if you don't mind, I'd like to post a little footage of you guys playing tonight. Yeah, oh, yeah absolutely. So you can give an idea of what they're like. If you stayed this long, thank you very, very much. Yeah, so we wrote this song about my favorite haircut and my favorite TV show. This is called MacGyver's Mullet. Take a bite, you family. I'm flying your fantasy. Light up here now. 
If you want to see more videos like this, please click here. If you want to subscribe to the channel, please click here and don't forget to ring the bell. Uh, remember to be amazing, and uh, we'll see you next time on Room 6. Say bye, guys. Later! Later.